Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. We're going to be talking about Leeds again. I'm joined with uh, Martino and Mike uh, for Let's Talk Leeds. Say hello guys. You know what I mean? Hello guys. <laughs> Cheers Mike. Uh, yeah, uh, basically this one's going to be called Transfers at Last because finally we've had some signings. Um, I just can't believe it. I mean, what, what do you guys think? Excited? Yeah, pretty pretty happy with what we've we've brought in. Um, seems like we're kind of heading in, uh, in the right direction, filling in a few a few uh, positions we needed to fill in. Um, still like to see a centre back, but yeah. uh, so far so happy. And Matt, briefly. Uh, yeah, you know it's about bloody time. We've left it a little bit late, but uh, it's good to see some uh, some movement. Uh, not all of it good, and we'll get into that a bit more than likely. But uh, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm, I like the signing so far, and uh, like you know, like Mike said, I think we still need a couple more, but I'm sure we'll be looking into that, and uh, we still yeah. got a bit of time left, so yeah, all good. Yeah. So basically, what we're going to be talking about in this particular episode is obviously the ins, the outs, um, pre-season as a whole. Who's impressed? Who hasn't? Who's uh, were you surprised by any results? Um, potential starting eleven and formation going into the season. Uh, and then we'll finish off with uh, season predictions and, of course, the, the big match against Stoke, uh, the prediction for that one as well. So we'll get into the ins to start off with. So, first of all, um, since you last joined us, I believe we'd already signed Baker and we were on the verge of signing um, uh, Blackman. Uh, so that's who we've got in for the goalkeeper. What do you think about him? I mean, I've, I've not really, uh, you know. Obviously, he's. I know he's. I know he's at Chelsea, but he's one of them players who, I think, he's never actually played a game for Chelsea. I think he might have featured him in a cup or something. But he's. Uh, he's been out on loan at various clubs. I think it was like, was it Sheffield United last time out? And it, it was, before yeah. that, I think it was yeah, Wickham Wanderers. I think before that. So, um, obviously, it's good to give you know um, Bailey some some competition. Obviously, with the we've lost. Um, uh, Felix the Cat and, and obviously Lonergan's Felix obviously got gone as well. So uh, it's um, yeah. So I don't know. I, th I don't know if he's going to be first choice or if it, it was just there for for competition's sake. But it does seem a bit weird that we're getting a goalkeeper on loan if he kind of doesn't have the thought of obviously starting him as first choice. Because obviously, what's the point of having him? <laughs> That's kind of, kind of my thought on it. Is yeah. Surely he's kind of it's, he Matt. must be first choice. Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, I haven't seen much of him, uh, and that's obviously been down to uh, the fact that LUTV sort of went down. They had technical mm. issues, so we couldn't see any of the friendlies. But um, you know, I've seen a couple of his. You know, he's made a couple of good saves here and there, and um, you know, I'm, I'm sure he'll get better. It's obviously still a bit of a learning curve that he's on. He's young as a goalkeeper. They don't normally mature till you know maybe their late twenties, early thirties sort of time and hit their prime. But yeah, um, you know, if he uh, if he uh, performs, then um, I think we've got a good, you know, a potential good signing. Hopefully, there's some sort of deal in there where we can sign him permanently if we go up. But uh, you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, apparently, he's done very well so far, so um, no complaints here. Yeah, I think personally, my point of view is, I think uh, I f personally feel that Bielsa is going to start with uh, Bailey Peacock Farrell, and it's going to be a case of the first time he makes a bit of a mistake. I think he'll bring in Blackman. That's my. That's what I may. Uh, the gut feeling is basically because he seems to. Uh, I think, um, I mean, we'll get into the friendly soon, but the last friendly against us, Palmers, I think that would have been most likely as close as you can get yeah. to his, his first, his, his starting 11, obviously, minus the signings, which obviously we're going to go into as well. Uh, another one of those signings is Big Bad Baza Douglas. What do you think of to him? <laughs> I, I was shocked. I didn't I didn't think we'd actually, I didn't think this one would get over the line. It was. Kind of, but I'm I'm still a bit shocked that that Wolves came out of nowhere, didn't it? So yeah, and I don't I didn't hear anything about it. Um, I just said I was quite shocked that that Wolves even decided to let him go because, I mean, he, yeah. he he performed really well from last season. I don't understand why. I know they've got all these Portuguese players coming in, but um, the fans liked him. I think he did he win fans player of the season. I think, I think the he did. I think he did. Yeah. So I think yeah. you know he's he's very well liked there. Um, I'm sure it was a, probably a shock for him as well, but uh, obviously a, a, a you know cracking signing for us, I think. Uh, yeah, you know, just sort of echoing what you said, it really did come out of the blue. Um, at the time, there were a few rumours about uh, potentially going and get the the lad from Bristol, uh, Joe Bryan, but I think for you know how he performed last season, being one of I think he easily top five left backs in the league last season. 
for the amount of money we paid to get someone of his, you know, his ability, I think it's big win for us. Uh, it was an area we needed to improve on. Definitely. We only had Tom Pierce, who's a natural left back. So, um, yeah, like I said, it came out of the blue, but, uh, you know, it was a nice surprise. And hopefully that's going to that's gonna figure out that little bit of a troublesome left back area we've had for a little while. So, uh, yeah, very happy yeah, with the signing since, of, uh, since as you said, Taylor, Big Bazaar Douglas. Big Bazaar <laughs> Douglas. But, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, for three million quid, I think that would an absolute steal, personally, yeah, in my well, opinion. Yeah. I mean, uh I mean, when we first heard about him, I thought, no, no, it can't be true. They're not going to get rid of like. I'm, I'm almost certain. Well, I think I agree with you, Mike. I think he was their player of the season uh, or yeah. something along those lines anyway. Obviously, Neves. It might have been Neves, actually, but he might have got young player. I don't know exactly. But he definitely was He, he was up there. If I'd have probably said he was probably the, the, the left back of the. Uh, well, of the league, basically, the best left back in the league. Get me words, that, G. But, um, yeah, I, I was just so surprised when he came about, and I was, I'm actually thinking, wow, bloody hell. I mean, he's, he's quality. I mean, I'm going to be showing, obviously, all the uh, attributes as well on, on in, in when future G edits it. And you can see he's got a cracking, like, technical ability as well. So, he's, I think, if I remember rightly, he's not the quickest, uh, but uh, he's very reminiscent to Charlie Taylor in terms of, like, his, his capabilities uh, with the ball, uh, apart from obviously he's, he's better at free kicks, but I'm really excited by the, that particular signing more, probably more so than any of the others in my opinion. I don't know about you yeah. guys with that one, but um, in my opinion that's the case. Uh, next we'll move on to the next signing, which is Jack Harrison on loan from Manchester City, thanks to the uh, you know the influence of, of well not the, the influence but you know Bales is influencing getting Pep to release one of his youngsters. Um, Gotta say, I, I don't know much about him, but any of you guys know? Uh, yeah, well, obviously, I, I followed him in the MLS for about two seasons. Uh, we're much in, I watch a lot of MLS soccer, so never um, mentioned it before. <laughs> uh, yeah, my, my, yeah, MLS. Uh, obviously, I, I do support a different team from the team that he played. Uh, but um, yeah, I, I watched him for probably you know I've seen a lot of him in, in two two seasons. Um, you know, he, he played along you know with Lampard and, and Perlo at, at uh, New York. CFC. Not a bad couple of players to play with, um, is it? <laughs> no, not at all. Um, I think like I think in the 2017 season, just before he went out, cause obviously the the way the season finishes, that's why he was still allowed to go out to move to um, Middlesbrough, Middlesbrough for, yeah. for a few games. Um, I think he was he started. Uh, he played 34 games, 33 of those he started. I think it was 10 goals and three assists he got. So uh, yeah, very obviously. I know it's a different kind of. Well, I don't know if it's that far different from the. The level of, of quality of, of players in the MLS to the the Championship, obviously the, the style of play is completely different. But mm. um, I think he's you know he's come up against some some good defenders that are are over there now. Um, yeah, and he still he still showed you know I think I think the whole Jack Harrison and Sacco thing was a was a move. It was if we got Jack in, then I think Sacco left. I think that was kind of a, yeah, a thing. I think they were kind of linked because um, it happened within obviously seconds of each other kind of thing. So. Um, but yeah, I think he's another, another good one. Obviously, he's impressed Pep in pre-season as well. He mm. played in the um, game against Bayern Munich and um, impressed them. I think he did come out and say that you know he would have liked to have had a, a few more minutes with Pep, but he's you know Pep spoke highly of Bielsa and he's he's really happy to kind of play under such a you know well well esteemed uh, esteemed manager. Yeah, of course. Yeah, uh, anything to add, Matt, on that? Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm quite happy. I don't know a whole lot about him. Um, I remember, I think it was FM16 that I uh, I was really trying to get hold of him, but it's like wages or work permit or something like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, from what I've heard, um, Man City sort of, you know, moved heaven and earth to try and get him. Um, so that tells you quite a lot about how well and how high, highly rated he is. Uh, I've seen a few clips of him being just like he's a, you know, a bag of tricks, uh, tricks, decent pace, a uh, good finisher. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it was one of the areas we needed to improve on, I think. I think we were maybe not necessarily improve on, but we needed more depth in the, in the wide areas. And he's young, he's talented. Uh, like I said, he's, you know, uh, highly thought of by Pep. And, you know, it's not any old player who's going to get high regard from that guy. So, yeah. um, to get him in on loan, it's good. Uh, if we get promoted, you never know. Maybe we can, you know, pry yeah, him away from there. But do like what uh, but... Odysseus did with Aaron Mai. <laughs> yeah. yeah, potentially. But um, you know, like I said, I'm I'm happy with the signing of him. He looks very, very good, and um, hopefully it gives us a little bit extra. Maybe like Hadi Sacco, but with an end but product. Better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Move yeah. On he's to... got the end product. 
So hopefully he'll turn out good and um, he'll fire us up the league. Yeah, I mean, I'm just on on what I've I've, I've seen anyway. Quick, like a few clips kicking about, kicking about and whatever. It does look like a bit of a like a flare man. Likes to tap people on. Does that silly flip flap thing on one of the clips, if I remember rightly, like what Rashford did against Costa Rica, where everyone was was having a wank over it. Um, but uh, yeah, basically, there's one thing I did see actually was uh, it was David Villa because he were over there, and he said there's very few players uh, that have uh, made him feel like there's something special about someone when he's when they're dribbling with the ball or something daft. And he's he said something like he's one of the few people that's made him feel like that. So that's high praise from like. Uh, you know, one of the arguably one of the best footballers of his time, or strikers of his time, should I should have said, uh, David Villa, uh, of course. But um, it's going to be it's exciting because, like you say, it, it, the comparison is going to be there with Sacco, and like you say, if he's got that end product, because Sacco had the flair, but it was like a, a poor man's um, Raheem Sterling, where he, he just didn't know what to do. Once he got into that position, always picks the wrong decision. So I'm hoping he's going to be a massive improvement on him. And like you say, hopefully it can help us like fire up the league if you like, and and try and get out of this godforsaken league in the right way, not into League One, <laughs> uh, which is what a lot of fans was going on about before any of the signs came in. But anyway, hopefully that's changed with the announcement of today when it was recorded. Um, Patrick Bamford has signed for Middlesbrough for a reported seven million quid, going up to ten million pound. So, I mean, what are your thought, initial thoughts on that, guys? Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, there was obviously a lot of talk about Vidra potentially coming yeah. in originally. Uh, then, obviously, there was the whole too much wages, or well, well reportedly too much wages, were uh, there was a sticking point. Um, Bamford, I don't know. I'm still a bit unsure. I mean, you know, last season, I think he was played out of position for a good chunk of the season, if I'm led to believe. Uh, yeah, I think I've seen that as played. well. Yeah, I think he's played more on the kind of out on the right, which isn't his, na- his natural striker. Um, but I mean, he's still he's still got eleven goals uh, from I think it's twenty three starts for for Middlesbrough. So you know that's still a good ratio um, from starting games. But I think he did play thirty nine coming in off off the bench and stuff. Um, mm. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, he's, he, we've we've seen that he can do it in the Championship before. He, you know, he had uh, was it two? When was it? Was he was on loan um, with Crystal Palace? Was it Crystal Palace? No, I think he, he were on at loan. Uh, were on loan at Middlesbrough. I think he got nineteen goals. I think I saw. Yeah, I remember. I remember he had it, it, something ridiculous, didn't he? The first kind of time he came to the Championship. So, um, yeah, I mean, he's, he's a proven goal scorer, and he's again like last season he, he still scored, which is kind of you know something we we was lacking a uh, an out and out striker as such. So, uh, I'm kind of happy we got him for a cheaper price than what. We reportedly were yeah. originally going in that because I thought that was a bit, bit sixteen too... million or something. I saw. Yeah. yeah, it's too steep for my for my liking. That is for, but he's not a Premiership striker. You know, you've got to remember this. He is, he is. You know, he's not a proven Premiership striker. So yeah, um, yeah. I think uh, for the for the money we've paid, I think it's hopefully we continues on the form that we've seen last season in his preferred position um, with the likes of Harrison. You know, um, and and Sayers and and Elioski potentially. You know, for providing decent. Uh, ammunition for him, which we should hopefully get him scoring. Anything to add, Matt? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's sort of the same as what uh, Mike said. Um, a little bit on the fence about it. I mean, I wasn't overly infused with the fee initially. Like he said, like f- what, 15, 16 million was mm. you know, way too much. But since the price has come down, you know, he's, uh, he's 24 years old. Um, he's shown, like you said, he can do it in the championship. Uh, there are players around him that are going to provide, you know, uh, Saez, Harrison, Hernandez, Alioski, yeah. uh, and so on. So, I think he'll be. I think he'll be a very good striker for us. Uh, I think. I think I saw something like uh, Bielsa said, uh, like the first guy he said he wanted through the door was Bamford, or one of the first guys. Uh, so it's that effect. Uh, I don't know if that's true, but that's mm, what I heard. I must admit, um, I've not seen that myself personally, but that you know, I'm, I'm, I'll believe you. <laughs> um, but. Um, I still think we maybe need another striker. Um, Roof didn't exactly set the world alight last season. He had a few good area, good points, but he was up and down, hot and cold and so on. Mm. Um, whether Tyler Roberts steps up, I'm not sure. I've seen him play a couple of times out wide, maybe. Is he an out and out forward? I'm not sure. Um, I think it's too early for Edmondson. I think he'll get game time, but I still think we need one other striker to maybe, you know, ease the burden, ease the load. If he, if he goes through a barren spell, yeah, I and know what you're saying, yeah. You, you, we've seen before what happens to strikers at Leeds when they go through a barrier. But look at what happened with the fans and J-Roy Rock. They yeah. just 
tore him apart confidence wise. Yeah. So I still think we need another one, but he's a very good sign. I think he is going to get goals. We've got the creativity and the, the production around him, as Mike said. So uh, yeah, for the money, I think it's a good sign. I think he still has, you know, he's still got plenty of time to improve as well. Yeah, I think uh, like it's uh, first of all the f- the fee that was reported. I just thought no, he's not worth that. But like you said, we've been seven million rising to ten. I'm guessing that's based on either performance or promotion or something like that. Um, it'd be one one of those I would, would imagine. Uh, one thing that I think uh, like I think Mike touched on it. He played on on the wing or out of position at the very least. Uh, and uh, I think, well, from what I've seen from February when he was playing up front, I believe he was playing up front. I'm guessing. Um, he got ten goals, I think it was, in like from February to the end of the season. So it shows that if he's putting his like natural position. I mean, albeit three of those goals were against us. Uh, let's not remind <laughs> ourselves, you know. But uh, you know, he still scored quite a few goals in, in, in that sh- relatively short space of time. So it shows that if he's in his right position, hopefully, like you said, we'll get this service to him as well. But yeah, it's it's a uh, it's an exciting transfer. Like I say, Vidra probably would have been happier with him, but if it shows that, he, that he's a Money grabbing bastard. We sound things and making out that Chuffin he didn't want to join a team that's uh, that finished less than like in a lesser position than Derby last season. I mean that's just a joke. I'm sorry, but that's just that's no reason to turn down Leeds, is it? Really? I mean, come on. But um, uh, yeah, well, it's, a, well, it's a lie, isn't it? Because uh, it is. he's had he had two months, and it's not a secret where he's finished. I'm not the season ended yesterday. It's I've heard people say, and I agree with it. It's a ploy to try and win back the Derby fans. Probably, but, yeah, yeah. Honestly, it's been found out. I don't. The only bright side of the Vidra deal failing now is if Derby get really, really desperate, we could probably halve the fee and also halve his wages. Deadline day or something. <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, even then, I, I probably wouldn't want it. He showed his colours, so yeah, exactly. Yeah. Go back to the sheep shaggers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> that's it on fence, Matt. You know, <laughs> like like mm. Matt says, I think if he's just there for the money, he showed his true colours. And that's not the sort of players that we want, I suppose. Yeah, obviously you've got to pay on the going rate, but fifty grand a week was far too much, in my opinion, for someone who's not like like you said as as well. I think it was Mike that said this. He's not a Premier League player. Um, it might have been Matt. Actually, I can't remember. But anyway, he's uh, he's not a Premier League player proven. If you like, he's played a couple of seasons, but not really done much um, in, when he's been there, in my opinion. But anyway. <laughs> It's just the the main like group of players that has actually left. Uh, so obviously we've had like the loads of uh, Sabiki or Sea Biscuit as I call him. Uh, Tyler Denton has gone out to Peterborough on loan as well. Uh, Felix Viedveld, we knew about him right early on. Jerry um, Grotz gone out to VVV Venlo on loan. Uh, Antonson, we think he's gone out on loan. Uh, Gomez left it pretty early on to So Shaw, and Paddy O'Connor went to Blackpool on loan. Now the main ones, which is probably to the dismay. Well, for one of them anyway. Um, and that's uh, good old Ronnie Vieira, unfortunately. Six and a half million quid, it sounds like. Going to Sampdoria. A bit of a strange one, don't you think, lads? Yeah, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't, get, I don't get it because I don't... Where did it come from? <laughs> like, I, I didn't hear it's anything so random, about... It? Him. Yeah, he, I didn't hear him about anything about him not being part of the manager's plans or um, uh, clubs even interested in him or anything. And... No, I, I thought, I don't know, I don't, I don't, I don't understand it. If, if you know what we're led to believe when he first came in, you know, he's, he's all for kind of you know nurturing talent. I mean, I know he wants a small squad and everything, but surely when you've seen a player of, of you know his, his mm. talent, then you don't, you don't just how how could he have made a decision? Especially if he looked at last season. I mean, fair enough, you know, not every he didn't have a yeah. best game in every game, but you know, he's he's, he's still one of the. I'd probably say the better performance of, over the season as a whole. Um, I, don't, I just don't get how how he comes to that decision quite so quickly. Of well, it was very enough. quick as well. I mean, you think yeah. just briefly, just to sorry to chip in, but they released his squad numbers, and he's gone from number twenty five to number eight to the point where people yeah. are getting his number on the back of the shirts, and it's like now I, I would assume they'll do like what they did with Chris Wood and, and give you a refund or whatever. Um, but yeah, I mean, sorry, mate, just carry on. No, that was that was basically. It. I, just, I, just, I don't I don't understand it. Um, I could understand. I mean, I suppose with the we have got a lot of players. I suppose who could possibly fill in for his role. But um, I just I, I would have thought if if he was going out, then we, again we um, you know I'm I'm hoping he's got something 
in mind to to fill that now. Like you know, that money's going straight back into another transfer. So, maybe yeah, he has always got. Maybe he has got something lined up, and that was, you know. Uh, but I would kind of like to have again been told, you know, yes, we've. You know, I basically just want somebody to come out and say but the reason for this, you know, departure because I, mean, I think most, if you look on Twitter, it's going like people aren't happy at all. Yeah. Um, you know, the reason we've done this is because of X, Y, and Z reason. And if there is a player coming in, you don't have to name names, but just let us know. You know, that, you know, that we are in in the market for a player of, of equally if not better caliber than, than than him to come and replace him. But we've basically had nothing other than he's gone. <laughs> yeah, which, as you say, giving him the number eight shirt, you think, okay, he's his first team. You know, starting eleven next season. But um, yeah, not to be. Mm. Matt, we'll regret this. Yeah, yeah. We'll regret. I. We've got. We're obviously overcumbered with central midfielders. Yeah, we know that. We went out and got Baker, but we've got Murphy who can go. I mean, it's not as easy to say he can go. Mm. You know, O'Kane can go. Um, I know that Bielsa has taken maybe a little bit of a shine to Calvin Phillips, but you know, Ronnie Vieira is what nineteen, twenty years of age. I think he just went twenty. Yeah, yeah he's got. Bags of potential. I mean, yeah, he didn't have a great season last season, but you know, even the best players in the world have terrible runs of form. Look at Lionel Messi in the World Cup; he was garbage, mm, you know. Yeah. And he's, he's probably the best player in the world on his day, mm. and he was absolutely terrible. So, I don't think it was form. The worry right now for me is that we've sold him because a half decent offer's come in, and it's the money. If it's the money, I'm really annoyed because yeah. apparently we had a 20 million war chest. We spent seven million on Bamford, three up front for Barry uh, Douglas. Um, there was the other one, Baker on loan, Blackman on loan, um, Harrison, Harrison on loan. So by my count, we should still have 10 million quid left. So yes. why are we why are we selling players? And like he's, he's got bags of potential as well, and. We'll regret this. I guarantee it. Watch him go and have a bloody brilliant season at Sampdoria and, and his value triple or something like that. He gets yeah. picked up by a Premier League side. In, in yeah, like Liverpool or Arsenal or whatever. We'll yeah. regret this. It's stupid. Rads, you should be ashamed of yourself. Right, so my view on this um, basically is, in a way, I can kind of see why. Because I don't think, well, the major reason for me is I don't think he did really well in any of the friendlies that he played in, in my opinion. Uh, and he did, I don't know, in the, I watched the last Palmer's game and uh, yeah, he didn't do very well. I think, you know, the song says he dev, never gives the ball away. I think he always gave the ball away. Uh, and I think with Click's emergence, I think uh, in terms of he's stepped it up in pre season, especially against Las Palmer's, I think that's probably. So, like, Med Bielsa's mind that he was probably going to be fourth choice, and I think that's probably what's what's done it. What I don't agree with is I think the fee is far too low. Uh, I think, if, in terms, of, I think he had the potential to be a different kind of midfielder, but uh, as good as Lewis Cook was. So I'm a bit disappointed. Uh, I think the reason why he's got up to for Phillips, like Phillips is taller, and he seems to be playing more of like in a defensive role, and I think. As much of a unit as Ronaldo Vieira is, I don't think he's the tallest, and I think that's why he probably doesn't feature as much in Bielsa's plans. Now, I, I, it's it's a hard one to take because obviously we like his youngsters, and, and the bizarre thing is we invested a lot of money in a lot of under twenty threes last season, and then we go and sell one who was like already here, who was already challenging for the first team. Now, is that part of the plan? Is that why we're getting all these under twenty threes in so that that's going to fund it? If you know what I mean, we're gonna we're gonna get him to play at least like a season or two. Is it, this basically is it like a template for things things to come? That's what I'm thinking. I would just basically mm. get all these young kids coming through. They're gonna be English, but because they're high value, generally speaking, we're gonna be able to raise some money that way, some capital, if you like. Uh, that's what I'm thinking is what that was all about. Because most of the young young players have all been English, haven't they? And obviously because of the homegrown rules and stuff like that. They do need to, to be signed, if you like, by, you know, look at Rob Green going to Chiffin Chelsea. That's clearly yeah. for one reason, one reason only. And that is to basically sit on the bench and fill up one of those homegrown spaces so it can get more foreigners on, on the pitch, basically, in the starting eleven. That's the way I see that one, uh, because there's no other reason for him to go to a team like Chelsea. Same with um, Grant, I think, what did Grant, Lee Grant going to Man United? Same with him. Yeah, it's exactly yeah. the same thing. It was so they can get another foreigner in who can actually play uh, and not, you know, they're, they're going to 
fill the quota of homegrown um, players. So I don't know. I think, like you said, he's, he's taken a bit of a shine to, to Calvin Phillips, although I think he's impressed me in preseason, to be fair, playing as like in more of a defensive role. I know a lot of people aren't a fan of Phillips, especially when you compare him to Vieira, and I know a lot of people are not happy about it at all. But like you say, if we put that money back into the team, who el- what else do we need? We need a centre back for start for starters. For me, we definitely need a centre back, definitely, hundred percent. So if that money goes towards that, and say it's a someone who's I don't know, ten million quid, and we've got that six and a half million for anyone else, maybe another striker or something. But it sounds like uh, Bamford's going to be the main man, so I can't see he's getting another starting striker. So it'd only be like a rotation option, which is why, in my opinion, Matt, I don't think we will go for another another striker. Uh, I think he'll probably use the likes of Edmondson and maybe and Roof and rotate it a little bit using them. That's what I that's what I genu- genuinely feel. Maybe Roberts as well. You know, I don't think we're really in a situation where we we probably need the money at the moment. I don't I don't, I don't, know, I don't know what we're trying to you buy to think in so, terms of. You? No, in terms of what we're trying to buy with what we've got left, in terms of another defender, maybe or two defenders, uh, and you know, as you said, a rotational striker. Um, I, I, do, I completely agree with Matt. I said I do think this is going to be something we're going to look back in. You know, I, I mean, I was I was absolutely gutted. I, probably, I can't decide if I'm more gutted about this one than I was when maybe when Lewis Cook left as well, because that one's another, you know, uh, England under twenty one captain. Um, you know, yeah. could, could be potential England captain in, in a, a few years' time, or definitely a fully fledged England international. I think he's going to be exactly the same. If you just keep, seem to keep doing this, it's like you know we had the same with, with Charlie Taylor, Sam Byram. Every time we get a good English player, mm-hmm. and I know it's hard. It's hard for us to, to keep them because unless we get promoted, you know, it, it's hard for them to, to stay around. The draw Premier um, League. But yeah, but I mean, Sam Dory. I mean, is it is that? I, 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 you know, I would say it is a step up from from Leeds. I'm not, I'm not saying it's not, but you know, would another season in the Championship be more beneficial than playing? I don't, I don't know. I mean, I'm presuming he's seen it as a you know a massive opportunity to to go and, and play a different style of football in a different league, um, which I completely understand. But from a from a Leeds United fans' point of view, I just they they need to come out and say something really for, for me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, what I would want an explanation. Um, as to where he's gone. I mean, if it was a case that he wasn't, you know, if it was just form based mm. and it wasn't money, then why not just loan him out? Yeah. Loan yeah, him somewhere. Enough. You know, if you want to keep him in the championship, I'm sure there'd be a number of sides that would be willing to take him on for a season, obviously put a clause in there that he can't play against us. But we'd still get him back at the end of the year. Why mm. have we, I don't. The thing it just keeps coming back, it just feels to me like it was money. We needed the money, which is worrying because I think, by my account, I'm not an accountant, I'm not Leeds United's account, we should still have 10 million quid left. So, where's this money gone and why do we suddenly need the money? That's what I would, I want to know why. That's basically yeah. it. So, Rads, get off your ass and tweet me or something. Yeah, some people, uh, <laughs> some people think it's in. in using the money to buy all these deals to do with TV rights and stuff like that. Oh, no, I don't, I don't you, think, I don't think it's stupid. That. They're two yeah. separate things. Dumb, exactly. Dumb. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I don't, I, I, don't, I don't want to go too much into detail. And before we get into the, like I said, the segue, I actually said that a bit prematurely. The other one really that's just happened, I think, uh, like you say, I think it came about and it got finalized today. Uh, it came out yesterday. That is, and that's uh, Sacco has finally, uh, well, he's gone out on loan. Uh, but I would imagine it would be the view to permanent to last Palmer's a team we just played. So, what do you think to that one? Yeah, as, as I mentioned earlier, I think, think that was a uh, you know a done deal kind of with the with Harrison coming in. Um, yeah, I think with the the amount of players that we've got that can kind of play in, in a similar position to him, or you know, in, in, do the same kind of role as him, I think we've got better options there, especially with with Harrison coming in. Um, yeah, I think it's a smart move because, you know, he, he has shown potentially, you know, he is a, you know, a very skillful player and, um, you know, he's, he's still only young. Well, no, he's, he's not. I mean, he's nearly, he's nearly, I think he's nearly 25 now. So it's about the time, he's about at the, yeah. at the point now where he needs to be really showing that he's got an end product for me. So, I mean, I, th- I think for, yeah, I mean, he could, he could go out to Las Palmas and completely, you know, uh, you know, completely up his game. And I know, obviously, again, he's going to be playing against a different, Level of opposition. Uh, mm. Las Palmas is 
Is it League Two? I think they got relegated last season. I think oh, they I've heard they got relegated, yeah. so they'll be in uh, like uh, La Liga One, Two, Three. I think it is. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it could, it could be could be really good for him. I'm glad we kind of haven't sold him because I think just you know, in he case. could be a player. Yeah, he could be a player that has, if he has a, a really good run of form with them and gets it. He could be one of the players who just you know completely plays off confidence only. Mm. You know, he's, he's not confident and because because he, he's a flair player as. You know, he's, he's not. You know, he just try a lot of trick stuff, and if uh, if he goes for a whole season and he, you know, bags a load of a, a few goals and gets a load of assists and gets some plaudits, you know, it could we could see a different player coming back. Um, but yeah, I think this has got. I think if this doesn't work out for him, I think that'll be it then. Because yeah, um, it's definitely last chance saloon. I think. Yeah. Uh, good deal. Um, he had an okay season of the Gary Monk. Um, his pace was utilised well, but the the big thing is like we mentioned earlier with with Harrison. You know. Harrison has an end product. Haddy Sacco doesn't. Mm. I don't I honestly don't know. Even with that season on the monkey, did okay, but I don't know why we went and spent what 1.5 million quid on him. He wasn't worth that. He still isn't. So hopefully, I just I hope we can just recoup at least I don't know half of that money, maybe a million quid off of him, and he has a half decent season. Last Palmerson goes because I don't think he's good enough for the championship. And he, if we get promoted, then he sure is not good enough for the Premier League. So, yeah, he probably got a point uh, there. Good for him, good for us. I'm happy with this. Yeah, he's a player for me that, I mean, just to round it up with, on Sacco, is you want him to do well, don't you? But he just he just, he just disappoints me. <laughs> just, like I said, final delivery just lets you down. So, but anyway, moving on to uh, the preseason as a whole. How do you think it has gone? Uh, who's impressed you? Who hasn't? Um, yeah, uh, lots of fixtures to be fair, which I quite like to see. You know, mm. quite a good, good, good uh, amount of games. I don't think, I think for me, as this, I think I mentioned in one of the earlier episodes, I would have liked to see us maybe playing against you know, maybe another one team who's of a you know really good quality to kind of you know of a, a similar standard. Um, maybe I think, in a different I think I have the last Palmers, I think. <laughs> well, yeah, but you know, maybe just another one of those games, really. Yeah. Where, yeah, of I kind of like the fact that we left last Palmers to. To last because obviously you know it gives us a good stead going into the season against. I mean, uh, sometimes yeah. on, on, on like football manager, I, I tend to go against the club I'm going to battle like 13 nil in real life. I don't think that kind of works. I think it's no. good to kind of go against a club of a you know the standard you're going to be looking to play it through the season. Um, yeah, I've seen some disappointing. Well, I wouldn't say that the results were actually disappointing. Some performances were disappointing, but the results you don't really look at that much in terms of you know. Because the, the the sides were completely changed. We tried different formations. A lot of the youngsters kind of came in and had a yeah. uh, you know forty five minutes on the pitch or even even more. Um, so yeah, I mean, obviously the fact that you know that we we you know came back in certain matches was quite pleasing to see. But it was again kind of maybe when we had the more experienced players on the pitch that that seemed to happen. But um, I, for me, I mean, I suppose if you were to kind of if I was to single out uh, one player who probably impressed me the most of of all of the players and it's a player I didn't even think would would kind of be in or around the the starting 11 at the start of the season but that's uh is it Klitsch? Click yeah yeah so, yeah I, I didn't I didn't I wasn't even he wasn't even on my radar for being you know I thought he might be a player who potentially could make the 18 uh make the bench but you know come on every now and again or he might have been a player who potentially got rid of um but he's actually impressed me quite quite a bit so he, he did perform quite well. I was quite impressed with him in, in, in a lot of the games. Um, uh, I think you mentioned it earlier. A player that didn't really impress me that much was Alioski. Yeah. Um, he, he just, he just, you know, it wasn't like he was awful all the time, but it, it just seemed like I don't know why, but for some reason, it just looked like he was like really quite downbeat in some games and and, quite, and like exhausted. I don't know if, um, uh, and sometimes it, it almost like he didn't know. Like um, I don't know if it may be translation. Sometimes is that's quite a hard thing to get across to him. But obviously he had a full yeah. season last season. It should so... be it should be knowing everything. Yeah, now. yeah you know what I mean. Like, just, I don't know. Just seemed... that, the ones that were already there. Yeah, it just yeah. seemed to be caught like I don't know if it's laziness or, or what sometimes, but or if he didn't understand what he was supposed to be doing. But um, yeah, it's just he just annoyed me in a lot of the games. And I know it's preseason, but that's kind of for me. That's when a player should be playing their the hardest to get into the manager's mind. You know, Especially if it's a new manager, yeah, of course. Yeah, you know, it's good to have the, the youngsters come along with the, the the older lads and experience, you know, what it's like to play play alongside them. I think that was quite 
quite good. Um, but yeah, I think it was it was good preseason. I did quite I quite from, I didn't see loads of it unfortunately because obviously we couldn't you know, not not the streaming system. Yeah, wasn't, no, it was a bit of a bit of a shame that. Got a goalkeeping wise. I I'm, I I know you said that he thinks he'll go with Bailey, but which is fair. You probably were right with that one. Um, I'm a bit unsure because although I know Blackman did concede, uh, he conceded four against. Uh, like three against. Uh, did, what he, no, he, he conceded one against Oxford. Conceded three against Geisley. Geisley, yeah. Um, but even like when I when I watched them back, I, I don't think uh, he was probably at fault for any of them. I think he commanded the area quite well. I felt he was quite uh, quite a good presence in goal. He was very vocal. Yeah. Um, so yeah, quite quite like that from him as well. Uh, we definitely still need a centre back because although the, the, the young lads who did come in, they they did okay. They could have give a good account of themselves. I don't think any of them will probably be ready for a full season in in the championship yeah. for, for my liking at the moment. Uh, yeah, it wasn't too bad. Uh, pre-season was. I mean, the results weren't all great, of course. There were yeah. some, you know, uh, Oxford losing to Oxford 4-3, beating Geisley 4-3. Uh, but in terms of the players that impressed me, uh, Ailing bagged a couple of yeah. goals. Hopefully he continued to do that. Uh, Roof got a couple. Uh, some of the younger lads, uh, Sam Dalby, is it? Is it Dalby? Yeah, Dalby, um, yeah. They yeah, got uh, Clark. He had a couple of good games. Uh, Edmondson had a had a good game against Geisley as well. Uh, Roberts got his first goal, uh, but yeah, I mean, Click, he seems to do very well. I mean, he's uh, before we got him, his nickname in Holland was the Penetrator because he could just pick <laughs> passes all day long and just pick. Yeah, what the other thing then? No, he's not penetrating well, anything else. <laughs> I don't know anything about his bedroom proclivity, so that's all, that's all up to him. But you know, I mean, if he can do that um, play, I don't. I, I don't like like to use this, but you know, sort of the quarterback role, maybe you know, just sitting there picking passes middle of the park, just spreading it around. That'd be good to see. Um, but yeah, like I, you know, kind of echoing what Mike said, we we need a centre back, regardless of what happens with Janssen, We need a centre back because mm. even then, I'm not overly enthused. Um, Aileen can sort of play there, but I think he's more of a he's a fullback. Let's go. He's a fullback. Uh, I wouldn't trust. I've seen some. You see on Facebook these groups and people put up their their you know what they yeah, think the, teams, their, yeah. the first team is going to be. And they have got Brady at centre back. That's that's just a liability. Okay, <laughs> no other way of saying it because I don't want him being the last man with two players attacking because he's just going to break one of them in two and probably <laughs> eat their insides to or whatever. Fair, that's centre-backs. where he's been playing him though. He's been playing him at centre back. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's friendlies. You don't often see red cards in friendlies, but, you know, when he gets competitive, so does he, and I wouldn't trust him at centre-back. So we need someone who knows that area. Yeah. That's why I think we came apart sometimes, at, you know, times last season, playing players out of position, especially at the back, mm. uh, you know, with uh, Anita playing at full-back, where he's like, we've still got Anita, haven't we? Yeah, That's yeah, really he's good. one, you know, I think. I don't even think he's got... I don't think he's been given a squad number, if I remember rightly, as well. So I think, because he used to be number eight. Yeah, so I mean, again, that makes the departure of Vieira all the more baffling to me. But we've, we've been over that. But yeah, yeah. So in terms of preseason, I mean, some of the results were a little bit disappointing. But it's not about the results; it's about getting the system down. You know, gelling as a unit. Um, the big disappointment for me with preseason was, in terms of our transfer business, it took so long to do that. Yeah. By the time we got the majority, you know, Harrison, uh, Douglas, um, Bamford. Pre-seasons were done, so yeah. we're not really going to get to see them. So that's a little bit of a concern, and it may mean that uh, we don't hit the ground necessarily running, but hopefully, hopefully it won't be as big of an issue, and uh, we can, you know, we can carry on, you know, pick up where we left off. Because uh, I mean, we beat Las Palmas, but the thing about it is, the game before. Las Palmas went and spanked Birmingham City 4-1 yeah. out of their place. So what teams there were, I know you can't really look into it because it's a lot of, obviously a lot of rotation in pre-season, but um, I don't know it could bode well for us. And um, you know, I suppose we just uh, we just got to see what happens now. It's not going to be an easy start. The first five games, we've got what, Stoke, Derby. Um, who else we got in there? But... I, can't, I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, uh, there we go. Uh, I just know Stoke, it's hard Derby, start. Uh, Rotherham, Swansea, uh, yeah, Norwich right. City. So it's not going to be an easy start. But no. I think if we can get if we can get ten points, I think that'd be a good start. Even even nine or eight would be a good start. I'm not even sure of the maths on that. Whether we can get eight points from five games, I assume we can. But 
We'll see what oh, happens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, one th- one interesting fact is uh, Birmingham City have got a transfer embargo. So, I mean, I don't know if they've actually been able to strengthen their team from last season anyway. And it seems to be that they might be getting weaker. So, maybe an outside bet for them to maybe get relegated. But we'll have to wait and see. Gary Monk did wonders for him, didn't he? So, we'll have to wait and see. But anyway, moving on to my thoughts on the uh, pre-season like you were saying right there uh, well both of you to be fair the results themselves weren't amazing uh, some of the performances were good some of them were not so good I think in particular I watched the game against Osset Town my local side which included Union O'Kane and Luke Murphy and oh my god it was a shit performance was that but somehow snuck a 1-0 win but uh, other than that yeah I think uh, the, the game that stick out, sticks out most for me I listened to uh, it was their commentary but Oxford United against Leeds and first half, first half rather, oh my god, we were shite. It got it with all them, and just just kept tearing as a new asshole every single time. But I think, uh, like I said, it was a very inexperienced team. And going, I think I touched on it before. I think Vieira in that back three or whatever it was, and it, it, it just, I think that again didn't help his cause going back into Vieira again. But yeah, it wasn't a great performance. Second half came out him. We we took it to him. We scored three goals, and, and you know you got to. You gotta do a Brendan Rodgers say how oh, they showed tremendous character or whatever it is, and they did they did so against uh, guys as well because they were two 0 down in that game as well, and we got, got to four two up and managed to pull it. Well, sorry, two 0 down, got to four two, and then they scored straight after, which I believe I think maybe Blackman was at fault for kind of. Obviously, the shot came in, but he parried it straight to their man. So yeah, it wasn't that wasn't a bit that wasn't great for me. But otherwise, he didn't have a, a bad performance. But the standout performance for me. I'm going to name, there's actually six of them here. Click, I just think because, like you say, you get the players, don't you, that pass it sideways, sideways, sideways. It's always looking to, to go forward, whether he dribbles with the ball forward or he passes it forward, and it, it, that was quite apparent. But in the first half against Las Palmas in particular, this is the one that really did impress me. It just seemed such like a boring game, where it just got it just possession-based, there hardly any chances whatsoever. When Click came on and Baker came on, they were we were constantly going forward and they were always looking to get us forward. And at, surprise, surprise, we ended up scoring right towards the back end. Obviously, it was a good, well taken goal by Roof. To be fair to him, but um, yeah, I, I just thought they changed the game both them to in the middle uh, middle of the park. I think Vieira went off and uh, it lose me who else went off, but uh, at this moment in time, but Forshaw's injured, didn't he? But apparently, it's got a rumor broken toe. He had a cast on. Uh, like one of those like Robocop legs on the other day. So he, he had one of them. Uh, but yeah, otherwise, Ailing, as you mentioned before, Ailing, very, very impressive in his, like, he, like, he loves going forward anyway, doesn't he? We've, we've, known that, we, we've known that already. And he will flourish in this in this um, philosophy, if you like, uh, in my opinion. I think he'll be one of our best players this season, unless, of course, injury strikes. Uh, I mentioned Baker already, already touched on him. I think he's been solid without being spectacular. But he, to say that he's a new player, I think he's done all right. Uh, and then... Notable performances from the youngsters. Shackleton, for me, has done really well. Uh, playing on the right right wing seems to be quite tricky. Uh, Clark and Emerson are the others. Uh, I think Clark from the other wing and Emerson obviously getting quite a few goals, albeit against the lesser teams, you'd say. Or you, you could argue. The poor players for me, the ones that have disappointed me the most. Alioski, you've already mentioned him already. Uh, just so weak. Uh, he, he can't seem to take anyone on. If he tries to, they just out-muscle him. And he ends up having to just go back with, back to the fullback uh, again all the time. It just seems to be uh, one, a bit one-dimensional with him. If he gets a chance, he can get a decent ball in, but it didn't seem to be that frequent. Um, the other players have disappointed me. I, I was hoping it was going to be good, Idiguchi, and he wasn't really. I think he played in the first <laughs> half against Oxford, uh, 3-0 down at half-time. He came off for Roberts, who started off, is, is off on that comeback, or oh, comeback of sorts. Um, and yeah, I don't think he did himself any favours. I think the first game he looked quite bright, but from that that point on, yeah, didn't see much else from him. And obviously, then as we've already mentioned before, for me personally, I didn't think Vieira had a good pre season, and I think that hindered his, uh, well, basically the reason why he's gone. Basically, my concern is, as you're on about, you know, needing centre back somewhere have you. Obviously, we've got Cooper still, and and Brady, as I mentioned, has been playing there. And obviously, Phillips filling in. Janssen, yeah, quality defender, whatever. You know, you can say that. He's not been part of all this new regime. 
So Oops. he will not know if there's anything new we're doing or whatever. He, he, he's not played any games. It's the same like you said with all the new signings that are coming, like Bamford and Douglas and Harrison. They've not featured yet, although you could argue that Douglas played like in a in a back five, if you like, last season under Wolves. They played three at the back, didn't they, with wing backs? So, but it, it's not exactly the same. It's a different thing. You know, the, he's wanting them to press. Are they going to be fit enough? I mean, if Jansen's only just come back, he's essentially starting pre season now. So he's not going to, for me, he's not going to be starting it first game at season or first couple of games at season. So that's, for me, that's kind of worrying. And it, I wouldn't be surprised to see Harrison not start, um, maybe Douglas not start. And I, I can only assume that Bamford is the only one that could that is likely to start of the ones that haven't actually played any pre season games, that is, because I, I can expect Baker maybe making an, uh, make an, an appearance. And maybe Blackman, like I said, but I still think it may be Billy Pickup Farrell. Um, I, don't, I don't know. I just think that, like I said, hitting the ground running is going to be key. And we've got some very tough games to come up with. You know, Rotherham, we'd argue, is the easiest one out of, out of the first five. But that's a Yorkshire derby. And, and historically, recent in, in terms of recent times, we've been pretty shit in Yorkshire derbies. You, you know, so I'm hoping that's going to change this season. Um, obviously, but I'd like to beat everyone this season, but you know, in particular, uh, if we win the derbies, then that gives us a bit more of a chance because there's a lot of Yorkshire derbies usually in the championship because there's a lot of Yorkshire sides, of course. Um, but like I say, I think I think you're being a bit optimistic getting ten points, in my opinion. Uh, I, I can see us maybe drawing against Stoke. You know, derby away is going to be tricky. Uh, it's obviously Lampard, so we don't know what's going to happen with him. Um, so again, I'd be I'd take two points if I'm honest with you from the first two games. Stoke are expected to win the league. Uh, Rotherham are expected us to get three points, uh, and then the other games, it's a case of a minimum of point at, at least. Uh, if you've got to win your home games, though, so and if you go by that, then that would get us to you know the, the closer to your target map. But it, I just with it being Stoke City first up and then Derby County, if we lose those first first two games. I don't know what happens from there then because it, it like it just throws it out out there, doesn't it? You don't even know what's going to happen next. You don't know how we're going to perform. It's Rotherham, but you know, time will tell. Obviously, we've got the the big game first this weekend, so. Yeah, I suppose it's a good time to move on to who you think the potential starting eleven is going to be. Uh, we'll start with you, Mike. All right. Yeah. Um... It is a tough one because I'm presuming he's going to go with the the, the three centre backs. I'm, yeah. I'm, I kind of think that's one thing he's going to go for because obviously that's what we've seen to be predominantly playing in. Uh, and I think we did that with a four-one-four-one at one point as well. But yeah, we did. Yeah, that was predominantly what he went with. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it'll be uh, Bailey and goal. Um, yeah, centre backs. Any? <laughs> if we've got any, uh, I think it'll be C- Cooper. Um, as you said, Janssen, if he's because obviously he has been in the World Cup, so it's not like he hasn't played any football. But obviously, he hasn't played. It's a learning and the philosophy that I'm worried about. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think he's he's going to have to start if he's if he's at least you know, at, you know what sixty percent ready. I don't know. I think he's going to have to start uh, really because we've got no uh, other options there unless he plays. I mean, I would have then put maybe Forshaw there, but he's mm. he's obviously out. Um, so I think he's either going to be Brady or potentially. Phillips filling in there. It, it, it could be anything. It could be Cooper, Phillips, Brady. Really, that's what it could be. If, if you that's what I, th- I think it's going to be that. Yeah. Uh, then in front of them two uh, in the midfield role, I think it'll be uh, Baker and Click. Um, and then I think he'll go Douglas. I think he. Well, no, he won't start Douglas. Will he? It would probably be um, Pierce on the left. Then Ailing on the right. Uh, Says and Hernandez and uh, Bamford up top. Right, so I'm just writing these down now. So who does no, it be not part? Sorry, click and do. So uh, Baker. Baker, yeah, I think it'll be that yeah. as well. Click and, and then Baker. it'll be um, so so you'll go, uh, yeah, Bailey and goal, Cooper, Phillips, Brady, if Janssen's not playing, yeah, um, Pierce playing left wing back, Ailing playing right wing back, Click and Baker in the middle, um, and then Says, I don't know, Says and Hernandez behind Bumford basically. Right, Matt, and uh, what about your team? Uh, so it's uh, BPF in goal, 
Um, yeah. The sort of the the center central defense is three: uh, Coops, Jansen, and Click. But Click more of like of a four, almost like a um, almost like a, a, a very deep lying defensive midfielder. So he's right. playing just ahead of the center backs, uh, sort of in line with Ailing and Douglas, who will be at uh, the, the the right and left wing back positions. Right. Uh, we've got Baker sitting dead center, Harrison Baker. on the right, Hernandez on the left. Size in the middle, sitting behind Bamford. Um, so uh, Blackman, Berardi, Pierce, uh, Phillips, Alioski, Roof, and then I think it could be a toss up between Roberts or Edmondson being on the bench. I think it must, must have to be Roberts if I'm being completely yeah, honest with you. But my, my opinion, of course. Right, so my team, it might be a bit controversial, but this is what I think he's going to start with personally, right? Let's not forget as well, there's a couple of players we haven't mentioned already, like, you know, who can play centre back, who has played centre back in some of the friendlies, and that one of them is Lawrence Debock. But I'm not going to feature him in this because I don't think he will play. But uh, I know he's another option. But I'm going to go Bailey Pickup Farrell in goal. Uh, I've got Phillips with Brad and Cooper alongside him. This is what I think he's going to do. I don't necessarily agree that he should be playing Brad at centre back. But we'll have to wait and see. I think that Click's going to start. I think he's done enough to get into his starting lineup ahead of them. He's going to have Alien to the right of him, Douglas to the left of him. But then he's going to have Hernandez on one wing and Aliaski on the other, with Saez in between him behind Roof. That's what I think he'll start with. And as soon as the players don't perform, that's when he'll start to implement the newer players. So I, I don't think Bamford will start the first game personally, unless, it's, unless literally. It's like an absolute assurance of when he signed it, he's going to be started from day one. But I personally think that's what's going to happen. I think uh, Bamford will come on at some point in the game. I reckon Baker will come on definitely at some point in the game. Probably is like uh, in where Saez is, whether Saez moves over to one of the other wings, I don't know. Uh, but I think that Baker will definitely come on. And then probably, I would guess, Harrison will come on as well. Uh, but that's that's my uh, that's what I reckon is going to be the starting lineup. Um, so yeah, let us know. By the way, I should have mentioned this right at the beginning. Anyone in the comments, let us know what you think you're what, what, what the lineup you think you're going to be going to be seeing rather um, at the beginning of the season. Season predictions. Where do you think we're going to finish? Nice and quick. Oh God, I hate this. I'm so, I'm so terrible at predicting there. Uh... It's in what things will happen. I did a, I did a World Cup prediction and that went terribly. Um, right. I think we will... I think... What, you just want a position where we'll finish in the league? Yeah, just a, just a place. Just a nice and quick. Fourth. Fourth. Matt? Yeah. Fifth. Fifth. Right. It depends okay. on if we can get another centre-back and maybe... Yeah, yeah. we need another. a centre-back. Yeah, so if we get that, then I think uh, we could go further. But I'm going to say I'm going to go to say fifth firmly in the playoffs. Right. Okay. Very good shout. Uh, I I was going to say that um, like I say, it's based on if we get another centre back in the current situation we we are in. I think we're very weak at set pieces. Uh, obviously, Jansen might solve that if he's like a zonal, like he has been doing for the last couple of times. He could head everything away, but. <sighs> I'm hard because I it's hard to say because I I personally think we'll narrowly miss out and I think we'll finish seventh or eighth personally and miss out probably by literally no point here and there. I'm hoping obviously I'm wrong, but uh, yeah, it'd be nice to see if anyone else can put their predictions in the comments below as well and and let us know your um your formations on and players are going to be starting whatever um and yeah then finally Stoke prediction for this weekend. Oh god, that's enough to fun. Um, I kind of, I, I, I honestly think if with the kind of if not, based on no transfers have if this is what we've got to worry from now today, mm. and Janssen possibly not starting, uh, but yeah, if we're starting with like a back three of Cooper, Phillips, and Berardi against Stoke, um, I'll probably say. I'll go for a 3-1 loss. Ever the optimist. Mm. <laughs> Matt? Uh, I'm going to go... I'm going to be the optimist. I'm going to say we're going to beat them 2-1. 2-1. Yes. Get in there. <laughs> and me being me, I, I'm, I kind of like to think I'm a, I'm a realist. I think it's going to be one all. And it's going to be uh, it's going to be roof to get the goal to make it hard for Bamford to get in. <laughs> But that's just my opinion. So, yeah, thank you very much for uh, joining us. Um, 
let us know what you think about all the transfers that have happened so far, ins and outs. Obviously, are you upset about Vieira going. Uh, do you think we're good? How do you think the season's going to pan out? Do you think uh, we've got the right personnel in? Do you think we're going to struggle? Just let us know. Let us know in the comments below. Um, we're hopefully going to be joining, well, coming back on a weekly basis now. After every week, unless of course there might be an um, international break, which if that's the case, then fair enough. But hopefully, we're going to be able to at least like have a look at how the games have gone. Obviously, Sky Sports Leagues are showing us five times uh, in August alone. So yeah, it's back to you know normal service resumes sort of thing. So yeah, we'll be I'll be definitely looking at the games. Or I'll be watching the games, should I say, and uh, analysing them. And hopefully, uh, I'll have Mike and Martini along for the ride as well. So look out for those videos in the future. But uh, if you like to just go ahead and uh, pimp your channels, we'll start off with Michael. Uh, yeah, I have a channel where I upload once a month. Uh, if, if if you're lucky, um, yeah. If if you like if you like world top quality content, um, then make sure you go and sub to Matinho channel. Uh, but check mine out also. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a sound lad, is mate. Really, he's just he just uh, struggles a little bit with consistency. I mean, I can't no, say I anything, do. like, but yeah. No, anyway, sorry. Go on, Matt. Oh, it's my turn. Oh, yeah. okay. I mean, I, I, do, I really have to, yeah, <laughs> do I really have to say anything else? Uh, yeah. Um, I do racing content. I am going to get back to Football Manager at some point. I've said it for the last two episodes, but I am going to do it at some point. But uh, yeah, um, if you like uh, motor racing, sim racing, come check me out. Uh, if you like interesting series that end after two episodes, go check out Mike. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Sorry, Mike. Sorry. <laughs> it's, true. it's true. Fantastic stuff. And then finally, obviously, uh, I'm hoping that most of you will watch my stuff already. But uh, if you don't, oh, you just crap. come for the lead. Yeah, it is. <laughs> if you come just for the lead stuff, I do play Football Manager as well. Um, and it's, yeah, it's there's quite a few series, like, especially on uh, FM18, which is what we're currently on. Uh, and yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed it. Uh, but until next time, we'll see you then. Bye-bye. Peace.